Good afternoon and welcome to Apex Instant Tips episode 76, brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern. I'm Anton and we have with us our guest today, Hayden. Welcome, Hayden. Uh, always good to be here, Anton. Glad to have you. Um, well, today we're going to jump right in uh, and we're going to give our tip in just five minutes. We're going to do a little role play today, Hayden. I'm going to take uh, the role of um, a business user and you're going to be the role of a somebody on the tech team. Yes. And, and if there are any um, acting talent scouts in the audience, uh, pay attention. Uh, you may want to offer us a role. Uh, yeah, so my um, uh, putting on, starting the act. Um, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and kick off our timer right now because we don't want to cheat. So I'm, I'm, I am kicking it off. There we go. Good. Let's do it. So um, a Antoine, I understand as a VP of uh, marketing, um, you uh, have a request for me as a developer of um, who supports your underlying uh, functions. Yeah, I, 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 recent promotion. I'm executive VP now, um, ah, so yes. executive yeah. VP of marketing, and uh, that's right. And, and as we often do, I I, um, I hand off uh, uh, my requirements. Uh, we got a we've got this marketing email that we want to send out. I, I think I already sent these to you, but I'll recap them for you. You know, I want high net worth people, but not crazy high net worth people. I want okay. um, you know I want them to have purchased something in the last couple of years, and I want you know young ish people. So basically, not older than me. Um, so if you could yeah. get that email out. This week, um, actually, by tomorrow afternoon, that would be great. Uh, I'm actually not going to do that because um, I am tired I'm of being the intermediary. For... <laughs> I, I report up through a different reporting structure. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, as a, um, I'm, I'm tired of being the intermediary for these kinds of requests. And so I have uh, built a tool so that I don't have to be involved at all. Um, so uh, oh. it, I, if you were to go ahead and share your screen, you can uh, see, <laughs> uh, you can, I can walk you through the tool that I built so that you don't have to bother me again with this type of request. Oh, well, that, that's great. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm happy to do that. Let me share my screen. There we go. Um, so here's this tool that you gave me. Great. Um, so oh, I so, can so just- Here are the, here's our customer base um, uh -huh. uh, that you can target with this targeted email. And so you're invited to use the interactive report filters to narrow in on the um, population that you want to email. Well, lucky for you, I'm, a, I'm one of those rare uh, executive vice presidents that can actually use uh, uh, an interactive report. I'm not just good at it. I'm like, I'm really good. So check this out. I want high net worth people, but not crazy high net worth. So let's say we'll make, um, oh, maybe uh, we'll change this to be a between uh, um, and we'll say between a million dollars and uh, say $10 million. So we want high net worth people, but not super high net worth. Um, we want somebody, somebody that's purchased something in the last couple of years. And like I said, we want young people, which means that they have to be, say, less than uh, 55 years old. So um, that, that qualifies as young in my book. Um, so there we go, hit apply and look at that. We've got the folks I'm looking for. Uh, what I'm gonna do is take a quick screenshot of this and send it right over to you. And that was great. Uh, no, uh, please don't do that. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't want to be involved at all. Uh, so I want you to hit record query. Okay. I just did that. And then behind the scenes, if you visit the analysis tab, um, and you refresh the underlying SQL part, uh, Essentially, uh, using the Apex underscore IR package, I'm able to extract the underlying SQL behind your report with all of its associated filters and extract all of the associated bind variables with those filters. So uh, I can assemble the query that targets the pipeline you want. And if you continue scrolling down, you'll see I, that's all the information that is necessary to send that email. So like, if you were really giving this to me, you would just give me this button. I wouldn't have a recorded query or anything. You, you have everything exactly, you yeah. need right here. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, I, I can right. uh, extract that and uh, do an execute immediate against it to um, uh, loop through it or w w whatever. Um, All right. Show, show me how you got this, because this is very cool. Uh, any developer can, can easily get the query that the interactive report ran. What do you got? Absolutely. Uh, so if you share my screen, Oh, and which you are. Uh, yeah, so behind this, <laughs> uh, when you click um, uh, Save Query, uh, I, I, I'm running this um, PL SQL. 
that uses the apex underscore IR get report function that with th simply adding in the uh, page ID and the region ID um, will extract the uh, SQL query uh, that is uh, currently in session for that report. So um, that L report is a type that has the SQL query and it looks like also the, the bind, uh, bind uh, yeah, names and values. So I, I can extract this and manipulate it su such that I can then make use of it. I love this. This is so much better than any other way that I know of to capture the requirements. This is fantastic. And this this uh, uh, query, this PL SQL is, is super generic and not super interesting. However, uh, just for the sake of um, uh, transparency, I have uh, published it in a public gist that we will link to in um, the report. There that, are- um, That's my timer. Yeah. We just okay. we just hit it. So there we go. Well, and if I were really after Mishka's job, um, I would know how to put that link on the screen and show people how to get to that. But um, hopefully she'll be able to uh, put that in post-production or something and, and we can uh, put a link there to your GitHub. But yeah. I think that's a great tip. We made it in five minutes. If people only came in for those five minutes, get out of here now, like, subscribe, tell your mom, um, call your friends, all the things. Um, that was great, Hayden. I think, uh, like I said, I, I've run into these same kinds of things with, uh, with users, right? And it's, it's the, the, the requirements are vague, all these kinds of things. This you get exactly what you want. Absolutely. And um, the, uh, there are many approaches that different people have that are, are worth discussion and perhaps could engender future tips. Um, the, uh, there's a temptation to assemble uh, SQL uh, um, programmatically using PL SQL behind the scenes. Uh, there are different approaches that, that people could take. Um, uh, the the uh, interactive report with in combination with the apex underscore i package has the virtue of simplicity. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I completely agree. Uh, I've, I've once uh, before that before that existed tried to read the underlying views to to, to assemble all that. Um, it's clearly much better. Um, I, I have noticed that that package is deprecated or that that routine is deprecated in the most recent uh, uh, version of Apex. Uh, which means um, you're not going to want to you're not going to use it once you start with the most recent. But there is uh, Apex underscore uh, query context, and yeah. it does a, a similar kind of thing. Uh, right. And so, so the emphasis of the uh, of the tip is the same, which is um, before you jump into dynamically assembling SQL using PL SQL, uh, cons consider using the the tools that Apex already makes available at your disposal to uh, have your users declaratively write their own SQL. Right, yeah, I think uh, the Apex has opened up more and more uh, in the way of APIs to get at that kind of data. Well, great. Um, well, hey, I have a, um, a wisdom of the week this week. It's a little bit, um, uh, a, a little bit long-winded, um, but as you know, I've been a big fan of the Agile methodology for uh, a long, long time. Um, and, you know, one of the things that is a, a tenant or has been a tenant of the Agile methodology is this idea of co-located space. Um, people were working a bullpen or, or at least very closely together. Um, and, and that meant like physically it, in the same space. And one of the great things about that was, you know, if you had a question for somebody, you, you literally just walked a few steps and, and asked the question, you would, you would, you know, have them super available to you. If you wanted to get to know somebody better, you just watch for when they were heading out to get coffee and you'd go get coffee with them. It didn't take any extra effort. Um, but of course, for the last couple of years, that's been a real challenge. And I've, I've missed this co-location aspect of it. And a lot of people think that Agile is about the 10 minute stand up, um, the scrum every day. Um, and by, the, by doing the 10 minute scrum, you get all the things that Agile has. Um, but over the last couple of years, I found that, that this stand up, this meeting, um, it, it doesn't meet all of my needs, all the needs that I was getting from this co-location thing. And in fact, you know, a lot of times people are now, everybody's 
working remotely. Everybody's, everybody's in our teams scan time zones. They scan national, you know, national borders all over the place. Standups become less and less effective. They, people try to go to asynchronous standups and, and they just put a message in Slack what they did. Nobody reads it. So I've been searching for uh, a solution to, to all of these challenges that I've had because I really like these aspects. So that's my long winded way to say it. Um, I, I did come across something um, that, that, I, that, I've, that I read recently. I'm gonna share the link to it. I mean, in fact, I'll show my screen while we're talking here briefly, just to say, um, this is, this is the article that I'm referencing. It's a couple months old, but it's about stand-up meetings are dead and what, what to do instead. Um, and so what, what this recommends, and I'm going to give a slightly different version of it, but, but read it, take what you want. But it recommends that instead of just doing a 10-minute stand-up, instead schedule a full hour. Um, and with that, that, that full hour is going to try to encompass some of the things that we're missing from not being co-located. So the first 15 minutes they recommend 10, 15, 20, however long it matters, it turns out to be are just social time. So people might come in a little bit late. They'll bring their coffee. You'll, you'll, you'll just have a, a bit of a social time. Now agile teams are supposed to be small. So we're not talking 30 people on a zoom. We're talking eight to 10 people on a zoom, but you get to know your coworkers a little bit. That's a piece that I really miss about the co-location. Um, but then, and what I've, what I've kind of morphed into is have your, your normal three questions. You know what the three questions are that normally happen in a stand-up, Hayden? Uh, yes. So uh, what did I do yesterday? Uh, what am I committed to doing today? And uh, do I have any blockers? Yeah. And so that doesn't take long. That still only takes about 10 minutes. But what I've found is... I mean... I, I could make it 15 minutes, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what I have found is that the, that, that last part, do I have any blockers? It, it really, it's always true in my experience that I need time from somebody else on the team that I haven't gotten. It, that time might be literally more social time, but more likely it's, it's a little bit of collaborative time. And so the recommendation in this is that you're spending not the 10 minutes, but you're booking an hour. You're booking some social time. You're booking a few minutes to say what people are doing. And then you're committing to the rest of the hour to help. You're committing to have that time available for your coworkers. And they're committing to you to have that time available to you as well. And I have found- So you're not necessarily committed to all being on the same Zoom for an hour. Not necessarily, right? It might mean, it might mean that, you know, Hayden, can you break off with me for the next 25 minutes? Or, you know- or, or maybe you need two or three people, or possibly it is a topic that everybody's interested in. But it's about booking that time and committing to that time to be available to your coworkers. Um, mm -hmm. And so that means you have to schedule this, this, this they, it's referred to as a sync up, I think, um, this, this um, meandering sync up uh, at a time that's available to everybody. So it might be in the middle of the day for some people, it might be at the very beginning of the day for some others at the end of the day. Other, others, but it's a time that everybody can make it for an hour and they're committing to being available to their teammates for an hour. So that's my wisdom of the week is when you're talking with these super distributed teams, commit to spending an hour a day available for your teammates. It's um, uh, provocative. Um, a, a lot of uh, scrum heresy um, therein. Um, I think so. Yeah. You, you, you gave your um, scrum team members permission to be late um, in your description there. <laughs> right. Which is never uh, allowed. Which is never <laughs> allowed. And uh, it, the idea that it would be sort of meandering and formless is also um, kind of heretical. But right, right. In fact, and, and I, I'll say, they, they, I'll add it. They, they, uh, they designate in this article one person a week and it rotates. They refer to him as the party pooper. And the party okay. pooper's job is to to close out the social time mm. <laughs> each day for the week. Um, so, uh, well, it, it's, uh, it's, it's very uh, intriguing um, because I, I definitely um, share your grievances with the, um, with the inadequacy of the 10 minute um, format for today's distributed world. Yeah. And, and I, I've, I've kind of, I haven't done this on all the projects I've been involved with, but I've done it on a few. And I, 
and I and I, I feel I've been more effective on those that I have. And so I, I, I and it wasn't until I read this article that I even realized that that's what we were doing really. And so I'm I'm going to try and implement this, and I, I invite other people's feedback on on the topic. Um, well, I, I will uh, read that blog. Uh, great, great. Um, well, that's all I have today. Anything else from you, Hayden? Uh, no, I hope everyone has a nice weekend. Great. And I definitely look forward to feedback. So uh, oh. do all the things. And uh, Mary Silver Jubilee to uh, the UK. Oh, there you go. I didn't realize, but yes, Mary Silver Jubilee. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>